webinar on career growth and job search conducted by AC Tech Alumni Association. As an EC member, I'm very proud to say that the association works really hard to bring excellence to the college and to favor the students of, with all kinds of opportunities. Um, I would like to request all the outgoing students to become members of the association through which a lot of networking is also done. We support each other and there's a lot of opportunities to explore and excel in our respective careers along with stalwarts in the association. So before moving forward with the session, I would like to inform that if someone comes, with, comes up with a question to be asked, please message it in the chat column. Um, also, everyone except the panelists are requested to be in mute at all times during the webinar. Please note that the session is recorded. Now I would like to introduce the moderator, Mr. Raj Ramesh Rajashekaran, founder MonitproSolutions.com. He is from the Chemical Engineering, Batch 1999. Sir, please continue with the session. Thank you, thank you, Saranya. Uh, good evening, everyone. I once again uh, thank you, uh, thanks all the panelists taking time on Saturday evening. Uh, to join for the session and give your valuable advice to the students. So we have, as a panelist, we have six members as part of this uh, great occasion. We have Dr. C. Anandramakrishnan, uh, Director, IAFPT Tanjavu, and uh, he's uh, Batch 1994 Chemical Engineering, uh, and then he also did Masters uh, from AC Tech. Then we have uh, uh, Tara Parthasarathy, uh, Joint Managing Director, Ultramarine Pigments. She did the industrial biotechnology from 2007 batch. Uh, then we have uh, Mr. Sudhir Kumar, uh, who's the founder of Inno Roots uh, Bangalore. And he did textile technologies to, from 1976 batch. And we have uh, Mr. Enard Jagannathan, uh, who's the current president of uh, Alpha AC Tech Leather and you know, Footwear Association. And he's the leather technologies from batch 1968. And we have uh, Mr. Ram Subramanian, the general manager, uh, Technip FMC, who is a big uh, engineering uh, conglomerate based out of Chennai. And he's a chemical engineering from 1987 batch. Um, and last but not least, uh, Mr. M. N. Baskar, who is the executive director of Sunmar Group. Uh, he did chemical engineering uh, from AC Tech from the batch of 1984. I welcome all the panelists uh, for this uh, session on uh, career growth and job search for the current students. So we have uh, both final year students uh, of the 2021 as well as who just uh, passed out students of 2020 BTEC and MTech students are here. So I request once again uh, another introduction by the panelists themselves. Maybe uh, you can start from why you left at AC Tech, uh, you know, assuming that your graduation and then now your current stage, you know, quick forward. Maybe you can take one or two minutes to uh, go through your journey, please. So we'll start with uh, Dr. Anandrama Krishnan, please. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ramesh. It's a really wonderful to meet everyone, all the students. Good evening to Unanda. I'm Anandrama Krishnan, and I did a Beta Chemical Engineering 1994. I continued uh, 1996, uh, completed my MTech. I'm from Udumalpet. It is when I came to AC Tech, it was the big dream. And I carried, that dream still is there. And AC Tech, already mentioned so many occasions, it is the temple for me. Whenever I visit to Chennai, without touching AC Tech, I never crossed or come back to Tanjavur that even that small what is comes from our AC Tech, I felt a little bit whenever I enter into the campus itself, I energize me. That's what I have the close link with uh, AC Tech. After that, I did my PhD at Loughborough University, UK, chemical engineering, but specialization in the food engineering. I continued my scientist position in Central Food Technological Research Institute, Mysore. Almost 20 years I worked. And uh, I became a director of Indian Institute of Food Processing Technology, Tajau, that is the under Ministry of Food Processing Industries. And I took over as a, this position almost uh, my age of 42, youngest director at the time in the National Institute. And uh, still I'm serving here, maybe till another 
one more uh, six months is there to complete my tenure. And I'm happy to meet our student, and especially this uh, type of uh, pandemic situations. All we are at home, and we need to think what is our future, future of ourselves, family, as well as the country. Maybe the good move by the Alumni Association. I think we need to do a lot. How IICT, ICT Mumbai has done. Alumni is running the whole institute and the branding of ICT and all. So somewhere we are lagged behind, but we can catch up the tone. I think a good step has taken last year. We celebrated 75th year. I think this type of event will help to brand it AC Tech as the equivalent to ICT Mumbai. Like that branding we need to do. Hope all alumni of uh, AC Tech, Textile Leather, everybody can join together. We can support our uh, kids who are come out from our college. So very happy to be part of this panel. Thanks. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, Tara, do you like to go next, please? Sure. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks, Ramesh, for uh, inviting me to join the panel. And it's, uh, it's an honor to be on a panel with uh, so many people who have accomplished so much in their lives. I don't think I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely having a bit of imposter syndrome right now. Uh, <laughs> don't know how, uh, uh, I don't really know how I got here. Um, I, so I'm from uh, Ranipet, which is about 120 kilometers from Chennai. I uh, came to AC Tech in uh, 2003. Uh, I was in the BTEC Industrial Biotechnology program uh, at the Center for Biotechnology. Uh, at that time, and I don't know if it's still true, uh, we definitely uh, had a sense of sort of separation from uh, the main AC Tech uh, uh, campus but also the students at that time and I al always wished that that word so um, because I did industrial biotech we did have a lot of faculty from the uh, chemical engineering department in AC Tech as a part of our uh, uh, as, uh, as uh, members of our lecturing uh, staff and our professors and uh, honestly uh, th that's Perhaps the only reason I'm in touch with my engineering uh, today because I don't use any of my industrial biotechnology in my current uh, uh, current career. Uh, we um, I actually haven't uh, been an engineer in a very long time. I know that a lot of people say once an engineer, always an engineer, but uh, unfortunately, that's not true in my case. Uh, I graduated in 2007, and I immediately went to get a master's in environmental management. Uh, from Yale. I uh, have a master's in uh, environmental management with a focus on industrial environmental management. And then I went into energy policy and I started working in think tanks and I sort of really just left behind uh, all of the engineering that uh, I'd learned in the four years that I spent at ECT. Um And uh, it was interesting because all my colleagues would always tell me, you know, you have an engineering brain and the, the manner in which I relate to uh, problems and issues is definitely molded by the training that I received uh, at uh, AC Tech. But over uh, the seven years, that seven to eight years that I spent in the sort of policy advocacy uh, and uh, think tank space, uh, I definitely didn't uh, use any of my skills beyond uh, beyond the very minimal sort of programming that my brain had gone through in the four years that I'd been at AC Tech. Uh, but uh, I did end up coming back to um, using at least the chemical engineering uh, aspects of my degree, if not my uh, industrial, bi in, in, if not the biotechnology and the genetic engineering and all of that that we did at uh, IBT. Uh, I now am the Joint Managing Director for Ultramarine and Pigments, where uh, uh, we manufacture inorganic pigments and uh, surfactants that go into home and personal care uh, products. Uh, so we have, uh, so we sort of have exposure to both the plastics and coatings industry and to the FMCG industry. And uh, as the as the joint managing director who oversees the manufacturing division, I definitely spend a lot of time using the engineering skills that I learned in uh, you know, while I was at AC Tech. Um, the little that I did learn, I wasn't a very good student. Uh, perhaps why I left it. 
uh, but uh, it's actually really good to come back and uh, because of the questions, uh, the, the list of questions that Ramesh had sent us um, earlier in the week and sort of I reflected on that and I sort of have had to, over the past week I've spent some time reflecting on what value I have received from uh, the university and from the institution and I'm, I guess I want to say that even though I definitely do not have, I have my life has not necessarily followed the path of an engineer. Uh, I definitely think that there has been immense value addition, just the ability to be able to talk to a bunch of engineers who are deep in the engineering, uh, who work in engineering, who work in technical services, who work in R and D, the ability to talk to them and uh, be able to understand uh, what they say is actually a huge skill for me. It's a huge uh, bonus for me because uh, I don't know if uh, uh, if I would have survived in this job if I hadn't had that background. So it's been a blessing in that way. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and uh, happy to answer any questions that may come up. Okay. Thank uh, thank you, Tara. Next, we have uh, Mr. Sudhir Kumar. Uh, sir, would you like to uh, quickly go ahead, please? You, you are on uh, Good evening, uh, panelists, and thank you, Ramesh, uh, for inviting me to be part of this panel. And I'll just tell you, I'll, I'll just tell the students briefly about uh, what is the value of AC Tech in the, in the industry. Uh, I was uh, really, you know, enjoyed uh, uh, the five years of AC Tech, particularly the hostel life, <laughs> because uh, those days the ragging was allowed and we were ragged and, you know, we become very good friends. Uh, so the networking with all the friends in the hostel and in the college gives a very good footing, uh, foundation uh, to be, uh, you know, facing the industry. And after my B.Tech, I passed out in 76. I did my MBA from Bombay University. Then I was, uh, you know, worked in companies like Mafatlal Group. Then, uh, then later on, I was, I set up process houses. Then I was uh, for a very long period in Arvind and Gokak Textiles. I was, I, I raised to the level of, uh, currently I work as an executive director with an its company group. And I was a CEO and uh, this thing at Gokak Textiles. I was a, for a very long period of, in Arvind Mills. I set up all their garment projects in Bangalore. I have, uh, you know, uh, I have traveled all across the globe. I was into exports. I have supplied, uh, you know, uh, garments to every brand in the world, both Europe, US, and so I have a very wide uh, experience. So all this, uh, I think, the confidence uh, comes from uh, the AC Tech background. So I want to stress that current students who are just passing out, they, they must uh, get that confidence back. Uh, it's only a temporary phase that of all of us are going through this pandemic. And I think we look forward to the good times. So I just want to encourage the current students uh, who are passing out to not, not lose hope and to be more uh, you know, positive in their approach. So look forward to a fruitful discussions and hope uh, we, we can all add value to the current students uh, uh, to find their uh, dream jobs. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. And next we have uh, Mr. N.R. Jagannathan, please. Good evening, Ramesh, and good evening to all panelists. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be with you. I did my leather, te leather technology passed out in 68. Then after my first job was a shocking one. In fact, the day, that day when I went to a tanner, he offered me a job with a room in the factory to stay, food arranged from the hotel, and monthly rupees 10 as pocket money. I cursed myself, why did I do this course for five years? It's a, it's a colossal waste of my youth. I took it as a challenge that I have to come up in life. This is my stepping stone. So I went back to my professor, Naidamma, and narrated the story. Is this the fate of the people who pass out from your university, from this college? What is that we are going to do? So he then took me as a junior scientific assistant in CLRA. 
to write a thesis on livestock manage livestock population in india in the meantime i got into bata through an entrance examination then i joined as a management trainee after 5 years i left bata joined basf in bombay during which time i was in charge of the complete quality control and technical service and help in marketing and at that time i did my marketing management from jamnalal bajaj university jamnalal bajaj college bombay university then after uh, about 10 years i left them and joined a company in sydney australia as their indian resource manager during which time i made indian leather popular in the whole of southeast asia and australia that was i would say proudly it was my achievement because and we, have, we i also contributed to upgrade my lower grade leathers and value added products and uh, that that was really what is worth mentioning then during that time of uh, my stint with nsw that is new south wales leather company i i was associated from my btech days with dr ms olivanan in the formative stage of alpha ac tech alumni later on footwear has added ac tech alumni of leather tech technologies but why i did this because during the 68 when i passed out i was the general secretary of the college to believe it or not that's the first time in the history of ac tech which was very conservative college in those days i did the college day program we, we took part in the engineering college inter college at dramatic association and won the prizes every year and unfortunately i had to miss college for one year because in those days university regulations were very very hard if you miss one year you had you can you can carry two subjects and you have to clear it before the next year but i did not do that in one mathematics so i had to waste one year which which with time i fought with the vice chancellor of university of madras dr l moliar mr k balsubramanian senate member and i pleaded with them that this draconian law should be reversed you should not allow one student time to be wasted for one year but nothing happened in those days but later on when anna university became Uh, autonomous and anna university ac tech became anna university the semester system came and what i wanted to achieve was achieved today nobody waste one year if they carry two subjects even for two years three years then another mile, milestone achievement i did was as sudhir said in the college hostel there was no telephone facility i fought tooth and nail with dr krishnamurthy who was the warden and also with the university of madras to ensure that there is a telephone facility installed in the hostel maybe after 3 years or 4 years after my passing it was it was there outside the mess the telephone came that was i i was told and maybe i i may be wrong in my uh, years but it did come then after uh, during the days of my uh, sydney companies alpha asitech leather for leather association was celebrating 50 years i organized a massive program at the lay meridian dr ms swaminathan dr ms anand and so many stalwart dr t ramaswamy department secretary of science and technology everybody participated in it was the runaway success so i was the president of alpha for 8 years then i wanted to give way to others you know familiarity breeds contempt so you should not continue for forever so i wanted to give way to others and i accepted out and again this year when the platinum jubilee celebrations were going on i was asked to take over again because this year leather technology branch is celebrating 75th year of formation in ac tech so they wanted to celebrate this also so they called me back and said you took over you take over so i am that's why i am here and in the same token the leather technology association of india the whole of india which is called indian leather technology association headquartered in calcutta and we have the regional branches regional zones and i am the secretary and the president for the regional southern regional zone and during this period we did organize an international conference international union or uh, ieltcs conference in chennai which was again attended by 200 of 
foreign nationals and 600 of local tanners and marketing people and it was again a runaway success so why i say this to the students we should take your failure or your humiliation in the voting immediately as a challenge try to come up take this as a challenge and try to come up and you can you can be successful and when i come back in the second round i will say share more points thank you thank you sir since you talked about telephone i could still see that when i was in 99 we had that same telephone i believe uh, so okay. <laughs> those times were very useful in in the hostel okay so we have uh, next mr ramasubramanian uh, general manager technic uh, sir are you available could you introduce yourself uh, good evening Uh, I'm, I'm, my name is Ram Subramanian. Uh, first, I thank uh, ACT Kalumni Association uh, for this opportunity as a panel member uh, uh, to interact with uh, you know students. Uh, it's a great opportunity. And uh, okay, uh, I passed out uh, from ACT in nineteen eighty seven. Beat a chemical engineering from nineteen eighty seven, and subsequently I did my masters from my NIT Trichy in plant design, and I started my career with uh, Tata Consulting Engineers, Mumbai. where i was there for 5 years uh, before i moved to speak asmo because i want to come back to south so i moved to speak asmo so i was there for 5 years in their uh, engineering division consulting division then uh, in 2000 i shifted to uh, technip india uh, limited so in technip india limited i am currently as a general manager uh, uh, process uh, responsible for uh, the you know the jobs uh, which we do both in lstk mode uh, and epc epc mode as well as in epc mo and uh, i am responsible for that and uh, currently we are doing two major uh, pmc jobs in india like you know nimali refinery as well as uh, gujarat refinery expansion as a, a pmc consultant as well as my client is also here mr baskar and uh, we are also doing a lot of work for uh, kemplas and mal limited so overall uh, is good a lot of uh, every year uh, we take uh, at least two to three chemical engineers uh, from ac tech uh, and also also from other uh, uh, colleges so i am actively involved in the academic uh, area also and uh, now uh, board of studies members in many colleges as well as uh, giving guest lectures as well as active in uh, indian institute of uh, chemical engineers uh, chennai chapter i just want to contribute you know whatever possible way to the uh, chemical engineering society and uh, that's my uh, aim Uh, today, what I am doing because of uh, IIC Tech as well as the chemical engineering. So my wife she used to tell me always you are talking about the valves, pumps, pipes. You know, I told her you know that today I am discussing because of this. So you should not you know tease my uh, my subject. Either I use. Anyway, it's going to be a very good interactive section, and uh, you know uh, thanks for thanks for this opportunity. Thanks, Amit. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Next, we have uh, Mr. Eman Baskar, and please, uh, Executive Director uh, Sanmar. Um, hello, good evening, everybody. Thanks to AC Tech Ramesh uh, for including me in the panel. Uh, I'll keep it brief because I've had a very, you know, uh, kind of a very, um, kind of a very different kind of a career because. I started out as a management trainee in Kemplas. Then I left within two three months because I was bored of a production job. And then I was uh, I worked in Bamar Lorry and all that for some time. And then uh, I was in the development side. I worked with T Ram Swami at that time. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, and then I wanted to become an entrepreneur. So along with a friend of mine, we promoted a pesticide uh, factory in Bangalore. With British collaboration, so I was a technical guy. So I went to England and all that. And then after that, we came back. We became ambitious, so we wanted to do some titanium dioxide with uh, American collaboration. So we sold this off and then went to. Uh, we promoted this in NEPS. You know, I was in the US for quite some time to so technology absorption and all that. At that time, I worked in gold processing and stuff like that also. But after I came back, uh, we didn't do really well at all. It is not just you know technical skills that uh, make you successful. So uh, we went belly up and uh, virtually on the streets. And uh, then I was struggling for a job. And uh, 
see the skill sets i had in technology development wasn't really useful in the industry ka you know context at the time so i realized that you had to be a very conventional person and uh, so i was having problems finding a job and then on about 6 7 months later i did find a job in ude uh, i worked there for a year and a quarter and all that and uh, so i needed to you know i needed to do a lot more so i went off to i joined uh, uh, in alexander carbon black of aditya birla group so it was a nine year innings for me in alexander carbon black i mean in uh, in aditya birla and then in two years i came back i was working with uh, mr vt murthy as executive assistant and uh, for about two years in bombay uh, so there i was you know uh, working on finance all the aspects of uh, management and things like that and then uh, in 2003 i went as a plant head for a caustic soda epichlorohydrin plant so it was a very unique uh, kind of a plant so then uh, by 2007 i left birlas this was in thailand and then i left birlas came back to india and then i worked for a leather chemicals company which is a sibagai ki spin off uh, tfl so in india i was operation head i wanted to come back to india so i was there for some time and then i joined nagarjuna fertilizers as a business head um, then after about 6 years there i left and then i tried my hand at textiles uh, i joined trident group i was not too happy with the culture there so i left and then uh, i had this call from indonesia uh, selfindo which is again a caustic soda um, you know edc pvc vcm and all that so all in one complex it was a huge plant uh, we had our own jetty and we were importing salt and things like that so that was a good experience and then i became advisor to the board of directors there uh, before i left and uh, i wanted to come back to india because my family needed me here so i came back i was fortunate enough to find a job in chennai i was desperate to you know locate myself in chennai so Uh, sammar gave me the opportunity so i'm very grateful to them for that and uh, uh, now i'm you know uh, taking care of the technical stuff so hopefully i stay here for some time this is all that's about me Th- thank you sir uh, before uh, we go to the question session uh, we have uh, mrs vidya shankar uh, alumni association president i ask her to uh, say a few words about the association especially uh, mr dr anand ramakrishna has given a very tough job for the association to take the help the college to the next level please um so good evening everybody and it's a great pleasure to be here and it's a mammoth task uh, congratulations to all the panelists and uh, ramesh for coming together and bringing so many students um see this would not have been possible if it was not for the Uh, networking that happened and uh, as an association so the benefit uh, is accruing for all of you and you know for us too it's a great experience only because we are together in this association so i will uh, implore that the first thing to be done is to become a member of the association and you know uh, benefit from it and as time goes by you too will be a reason for several students to uh, get a better grip and uh, a uh, better knowledge about the future and current trends as well so uh, with these words i'm uh, you know i did my chemical engineering in 1986 so after that i had a brief stint in a couple of uh, chemical industries and then i started my own ngo and uh, this is history so uh, i wish you all well for the whole of the program and i hope um, and wish that everyone gets a chance to get their queries answered and you have an excellent team of uh, panelists here and i wish you all the very best thank you very much okay uh, thank you ma'am so with this uh, i i have my few questions uh, lined up you know i want uh, the panelists to be brief and you know, over to the point so that we can cover as many questions as possible so if if you think back to in your ac tech times what is the most formative experiences you had at ac tech which uh, directly helped you to uh, advance your career or what you are currently doing right now so please talk about your formative experiences like you know this is what i did and that directly helped me so again we'll start with uh, dr anand ramakrishnan please 
thanks ramesh actually it is the i said initially it's the vc tech is the everything for me actually i come from very small town woodmull peta i said when i joined first two years nothing is going something above my head then slowly i settled down but my interest still in the both the side cultural and uh, studies and even i was the joint secretary of our kalakarthi so that time dr cm lakshmanan was the director and um, dr d mohan sir was there in the things and he used to say you learn everything not only uh, studies and for organizing the event and all the things will give the better experience and you may do some lot of mistakes but don't worry about that try to do that that's what he advised to me when we started um, putting the kalakriti in the little bit a bigger manner in the 1993 as well as 94 so then we move on to that second thing after my btech i wanted to go for the job uh, then dr cm lakshman told why you are to uh, go for the job you continue for the mtech i don't know why he want me to be there in the institute or i don't know but i wanted to go out but still i continued my journey there and after completing again sir told to continue for myself into the another institutions so it is like a uh, his guru for me everything has taken my, more than uh, my father what he knows about me professor lakshman sir knows about me and recently we know two years back lakshman sir is not with us at right now uh, but uh, that motivation and when i got the interview call from the cftri again he told what are things to be asked and how to go then he sir told me to meet uh, dr t ramasamy sir so it is like um, very like uh, they care about their student who studied in the ac tech otherwise i would have been not this type of positions that th if they would have left me i would have been gone anywhere else not only that other teachers still uh, limaros ma'am ma is my guide i think uh, myself is the first uh, second student of madam and joined uh, uh, ac tech and gandhi sir still uh, all even my son still anything he wanted to tell to me he will call uh, dr nagendra gandhi sir to inform me this is so this is the what the relations after almost uh, 20 plus years uh, 28 years i completed still that carries i don't think so any other institutions faculties has a such a closeness to the student to carry over uh, so that's what i said <laughs> this everything from ac tech only i got so i wanted to give back but i don't know how but still this is what my shape my career all the decision in my career is uh, without consulting with my teachers i never taken any decisions so, uh, <laughs> i can't speak more than this so that's what thank you thank you sir so next uh, i think any panelists want to share their experience on the maybe your uh, thara uh, about yeah, your format would... yeah please go ahead go ahead sir yeah so basically a few tips i would like to give to students uh, i mean uh, i won't directly talk about ac tech here and i'm degali san to me was a, and uh, jagannath swami these two people were really towering you know they were in uh, imparting knowledge and in a very very practical way they used to teach us and uh, not many people were you know paying attention to degali san at least but i was and uh, that helped me a lot but more than that you know in industry a couple of things i would like to tell the people is that uh, there are two three things we need to do as chemical engineers we translate chemistry into profit okay ultimately that is what the rest of it and every one of us need to understand that unless we provide value there is no value for us okay the job uh, and the third mistake that many of us do is that we become very product centric or business centric like somebody gets into a one particular type of product they just stick to that or one particular style of business if somebody gets into an engineering company they don't they, they are not agnostic to you know uh, a product or a business there has to be a basic understanding uh, of chemistry and technology and engineering the engineering always comes last because technology is what dictates engineering and if we can try to know how to bridge the gap 
that is when you add value and every time every day that you go to your respective units or whatever it is you need to look at how am i going to add value to this how am i going to cut cost how am i going to improve productivity and bring value that is the buzzword i mean many engineers even me when i came out of the college i didn't realize this but whenever anybody works under me whenever i mentor people i just tell them this i this just i thought i should tell the people others you if you want to share please go ahead um so i think the question was uh, what value you got i got out of my time at uh, ac tech right? yeah correct what was the formative experience like you know sure so um this is true of most experiences that we go through in life um and definitely of my time at ac tech um the value you get out of any experience is the value that you decide to take out of it uh, that's number one um i think most of us especially as young adults who enter college without any understanding of the format of the college and understanding of what is expected of the individual and really not knowing uh, who your peers are and who your colleagues are uh, we tend to associate with uh that which we know right so we tend to become friends with people whom we feel are like us um and i think that's the biggest uh mistake that we make um the value that i got out of ac tech was really the fact that i spent i had i i i will not uh, claim to be a uh, a very social person i did not know many people from the ac tech main building um but uh even within the 90 to 120 classmates that i had in uh uh ibt i made an active effort to understand our differences uh but also understand the value that uh others could add to my life and i think that's the biggest uh learning that you really take out of any experience um and i say this because um, when you're going through college uh, it's it's really difficult to uh, actually understand what is happening uh, a lot of it is uh, last minutes last minute you're trying to get notes from someone you're trying to photocopy notes you're trying to understand what books you're supposed to read uh, but the truth is those are the experiences that built the bonds like i still remember how people helped me uh when i didn't understand something and they did and i think that's um uh, it's sort of it's true of any college experience but it's especially important in the context of uh, you know being in the gindi campus being at ac tech and having exposure to the college of engineering you sort of are your peers are people who are incredibly smart and they are people who are who have put a lot of effort and time into uh making sure that they are able to get to ac tech or able to get to college of engineering or able to get to school of architecture and planning right so these are people who have struggled to get here and i think understanding that and valuing that is one of the biggest things that we as individuals can take away from that um and the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is that we tend to associate only with those who are like us um the the other thing about i think uh, especially tamil nadu engineering colleges uh, specifically ac tech is that in the second and third year you get people who uh, pass out of uh, who finish their polytechnic and come in uh, to finish up their four year uh, college and those people are amazing uh, right so there is a huge amount of value that they bring to the table there is a one of the problems that we as individuals tend to do is we tend to judge people on the basis of the language that they speak but these are people who have incredible knowledge and these are people who have a lot of experience uh that we tend to minimize and i think 
understanding that there is value that they are bringing to the table is one of the biggest things that uh, uh, I took away from that experience. Also knowing that uh, we are a community and you know we don't grow as a community unless we help each other. So ensuring that there is that sense of camaraderie that is built amongst your classmates or amongst people from different uh, uh, years and things like that. I think that's also one of the most important things about uh, the college experience for me. Like I said, I didn't uh, stay in the engineering space, so I can't really speak for the academic value that I took away from it. I still remember a lot of my engineering, but uh, I think that's just force of habit and has nothing to do with actually me studying because I didn't study very well. So. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, others want to share their... <clears throat> Yeah, I can uh, probably uh, say a few words to the, the students who are looking out for opportunities uh, in today's world. I know it's a difficult uh, time we are passing through this pandemic, but I think the, the, the difficult time will, uh, the tough time will uh, pass out. It will not last long. So I think I'd like to uh, briefly uh, touch upon that uh, what we get in AC Tech is the education. Most of the institutes, uh, people who pass out are not industry ready. Whether it even, uh, I, I would say even from the IITs. Uh, the Indian um, education system is like that. Unlike, uh, I've seen colleges in uh, Germany and uh, you know other kind of European countries and including US, I've been to the institutes. They have an industry inside the campus, I mean, inside the college. So people are trained, uh, you know, practically on uh, machines and practically on the, you know, plants. So that we are lacking here. So uh, apart from getting the education, I think uh, one strong uh, thing I would suggest is people must, uh, the students must develop the skills. And skill and then attitude is very important uh, for them to come up uh, in the, the current skills. I think what uh, uh, they, they should uh, concentrate on is uh, one is the digital technology which is going to be there uh, working from home and you know I think most of the students must try and do some online courses on digital uh, you know marketing digital technology and 3D and maybe they could uh, touch upon AI uh, VR virtual reality augmented reality these are some of the tools they should be familiar with and uh, they should create a good uh, LinkedIn profile. I think all of them must have a good LinkedIn profile and uh, probably they must have a good CV made one or two pages maximum, not five or six pages they uh, have a very brief and what they have been able to achieve. Uh, and they must have a good value systems uh, inside them whenever they go for an interview. The first thing people ask is the value systems, what is the value system they have? the people are going to judge based on the value system they have. Uh, although they don't have the experience, the value system is very important uh, for them to be absorbed by the industry. So, so LinkedIn profile and uh, maybe they could, uh, uh, most important thing is uh, the current uh, 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 people, although they have the uh, technology skills, but uh, uh, the soft skills are lacking. So most important thing is uh, especially uh, the communication skills. Communication is not just talking some English or Tamil. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's about how you communicate well. So I would strongly recommend most of our my uh, students who are passing out, join a Toastmasters club nearby. Wherever, whichever uh, city they are located in, they must join a Toastmasters club. So that will greatly help them uh, to improve their communication skill. Because to come up in life, I think that is one of the most important factor for any leader uh, to have. Because I want all these people to be become leaders in the industry. So to become a leader, I think communications, uh, which is uh, which is uh, uh, lacking, and which uh, none of the colleges are, uh, you know, uh, 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 focusing on. So I think each of the individual students can uh, pick up on this communication skills, join some Toastmasters club. And, and also more important is to have a good networking. Uh, you can form some uh, you know, WhatsApp groups. 
have a good net networking with your seniors and uh, so that that will greatly help uh, all the students to you know um, uh, uh, it's all word of mouth now now most of the positions are not advertised it's word of mouth and you know that that will help the students to get lot of opportunities so i i i certainly uh, wish all and they should be very positive i mean because of the pandemic they should not feel a very you know depressed or negative feeling should not come in their minds so they must stay positive i'm sure each one of you will get a good jobs uh, very soon so stay positive and wishing each one of you all the very best to get your dream jobs thank you uh, thank you sir because uh, ramesh yeah. only one minute sorry to interrupt there have been a lot of questions about uh, non availability of jobs and all that see i would like to tell the students that even when i passed out uh, the situation was no different actually because uh, these are the first four year batch and uh, we were sandwiched between uh, you know a five year batch coming out uh, in the middle of the year and then we came out at a very odd time in january 85 we passed out i joined the college in 1980 and uh, there were no jobs available uh, so three four months and at that time finding a job was not so easy also there were in many chemical industries especially in tamil nadu uh, and uh, the same is the situation now also so all i'm trying to say is that uh, it used to be a struggle but right now you got so many avenues uh, i mean uh, i know that we are going through a lull phase right now because of the pandemic but i would like to tell you that you know so many uh, like computational fluid dynamics you got uh, so many softwares available even i have been trained when i was in aditya birla group in that and you got uh, process simulation software you got companies like what uh, mr ramesh is running right now uh, process analytics and all that these kind of avenues were not available when we were uh, you know we had passed out so uh, you know in artificial intelligence also the, this is the field coming up and then this is where you can apply your fundamental knowledge and see how you can connect the things up so i what i'm trying to say is that don't be pessimistic this is a very premier this is a premier institution and what para said about the smartness of the people most of you who have come in there have really been very smart otherwise you won't have gotten into this uh, you know this institute so obviously you know you have the capability and then you will be um, you know grabbed by the companies once the thing once things settle down yeah, the economy is definitely uh, picking up and uh, please don't lose heart and uh, things will happen very fast i personally was jobless for at least 4 uh, 5 months before you know i found my first job so don't uh, you know don't feel that you know you are uh, this is the batch that it's being you know why me like syndrome please don't get into that i just want to say that because i see so many concerns there yeah thank you sir namin yeah go uh, go ahead sir i think we'll continue on the similar uh, theme like what advice you have for the yeah. students yeah you know, correct and, Uh, Ramesh, uh, just uh, to to uh, know, answer your question, you know, what is the value addition of AC Tech in our you know life? I think uh, for me, I think AC Tech has uh, is uh, you know tremendously influenced my career because I studied in a small town. That time, Namakkal is not a very big town, and a government school, a Tamil medium. Then I joined AC Tech. So as you know, uh, Kumar is mentioning, you know, first two years uh, nothing is uh, clear to me because either uh, you know not good having not good uh, not having good knowledge in english so everything is a problem for the first two years in fact uh, at that time i realized you know uh, where uh, i was lacking so i started listing out that time itself okay when compared to you know some students from banavani from iit banavani or some gan bosco you are uh, nowhere near to them you know in terms of communication or in terms of school because you are a very average person from a small town Uh, so they are all like you know big uh, people and uh, you are uh, insignificant in front of them so that has given a lot of opportunity for me to realize okay where i am today so i start analyzing myself first is language okay then i you know i used to go after the college hours to you know learn english basic english after you know at that time they used to give passes so i go to 
class at 6 o'clock somewhere in i think sabari institute uh, i at uh, you know mount road there is an institute called sabari institute they used to teach english so i attended you know for a few months uh, the basic english course you know uh, otherwise you know uh, you cannot survive so that is the level of uh, you know ac tech so i first did that then how to improve communication skills i used to read papers uh, read with the you know, dictionary we don't know the words you know listen to english news in doordarshan news so that at least you know what they are talking and we try to understand i think this four years has given me a tremendous uh, you know uh, change in me to know what uh, where i am and where i want to go i think that four years really i placed in ac tech uh, but to improve myself uh, you know from a, a rural student uh, to a student at least uh, uh, to uh, you know uh, to be competitive in this uh, role so definitely you know that's why one one thing i want to tell students is okay so you need to really analyze okay where you are okay then you take steps to uh, you correct yourself to achieve what you want otherwise you know uh, it's very difficult because nobody is going to help you even your friends they are not going to tell you how how you have to grow nobody is going to tell you they will probably tease you in some encouraging you so i think it's that's what i think i did uh, I, that is a, you know for me that is the take over for the for ac tech the four years definitely changed my life so that's what i want to share thanks can i add something ramesh ramesh yeah, yeah maybe you will go with uh, dr anand ramakrishnan then to tara please sure uh, people are uh, posting some questions maybe most of the students are worried about uh, what is happening in the post this pandemic situations students don't worry about anything this on and look at what we faced the last 6 months and india gained a lot it's a very clear data what is coming that recently two weeks back released our export is increased 10% is the quite lot 10% of the total export increase in all the segment especially agriculture and food export increased more than 15% it's a very very high and this year is monsoon is very good and our production level is increased and no need to panic anything definitely is going to move it and everybody know that how we managed the total pandemic situation on side the healthcare and we know that our structure how bad but still we managed especially our production line nothing has stopped just first one month even that one month our requirement of the food is gone more than 150 times still we managed to supply chain management everything went on very well and that industry one industry i know very well recently food industry is growing very very rapidly and other sectors also what i am thinking allied sector and government of india is doing a wonderful job now what they have analyzed with the trade promotional council as well as apida and all we wanted to most of the country wanted to switch over from the product from the our neighboring country and how to do that they have the clear analysis and if you look at any product for example only one product i can give you the simple example for bakery product only biscuit i'm talking europe europe whole europe that import 2017 whatever the import india's export is less than 1% 0.003% so we have the highest production of the wheat and highest production of the sugar just almost uh, 100 million tons of the wheat and 270 lakhs tons of the sugar just we convert into the biscuit we need a innovations there that is the one thing so we need to move on to that another question also entrepreneurship development and the, we are world number third in the startups country but still why our students are not taking such things in the very seriously you can start your company work like uh, ramesh has started and it's a very lot of scope is there uh, sudhira mentioned about 3d footprinting 3d printing all these things coming up students after finishing your btech you can start your company government is supporting lot on the starting your startup companies already is there and you can avail even pmfm scheme still 30 lakhs you will get the government grant just you need to invest 3 lakhs rupees it is a possible to get such type of support from the government and you need to understand the only market what is the consumer demand you produce the product from the either food product or consumer product any product just that idea and where is your market how to do that if you link all these things is possible our institute last year we put is almost 100 plus entrepreneurship uh, people from the our institute alone they come with the only fifth standard to 10th standard education to people are doing the business more than a crore worth of the business why chemical engineer can't do that it is easy to do that we have one side yes you can go with the career like you complete your course industry that's another one and right now if it is that is the route is if you fail you are unable to move on that side just switch over this one 
here you can be a employer and you can give the job to others is easy to do lot of uh, opportunities are there for example our institute if you come with that we give all the equipment free just you need to bring the raw material you can make the product out here you can take out only or to pay the electricity charge and iit chennai and most of the government institutions now supporting the startups you can incubate your company there and lot of ecosystem is developing around that so don't worry about that just you need to think what you want to be there my point is india is moving in that directions and we wanted to capture what is other country has done for the last 20 years our india is going to do for next 20 to 25 years it's most industrialized if such a case we wanted to increase this 10% what one year we done it next year 20% increase means lot of export market is coming so you learned everything you got the skill set just only one thing you need a that will start our company support is come from every corner that risk you should take the calculative risk definitely you can succeed on thank you so much yeah tara you want to go ahead please yeah uh, thanks i uh, wanted to say a few things so there is a, obviously a lot of anxiety uh, and fear about not being able to get a job during this crisis and i think that's fair um, people aren't hiring uh, people are losing their jobs and i think these are all fair fears to have especially when you're young graduates who need to make money to survive and i think uh, you know not everyone has a safety net to fall back on not everyone can go home to their parents i think we all have to recognize that that said um what can what can graduates do uh to survive the maybe a year or six months or nine months or how much ever longer this crisis is going to last the first thing i'd say is don't stick to jobs in urban areas there are jobs available tamil nadu is one of the most urbanized states in the country and it's actually from a human development indices perspective it is equivalent to many developed countries so life in a small town is not bad and you don't have to worry about not getting internet you don't have to worry about not being able to go to the shops you don't have to do you don't have to worry about uh, lack of entertainment i grew up in a small town and a lot of our panelists have also grown up in small towns and we all many of us maybe live in small towns i i still do i spend 50% of my times in tanipet um do not fear the small town that is where a lot of you're all engineers you're all going to have to work if you want to work in the engineering space that you chose to graduate in you are going to have to agree to work in factories that exist in small towns and that's the truth of it it may be in a more official area it may not be it may be in a peri urban area it may be in a suburban area it may be in a rural area you just have to agree to do it this is the beginning of your career and there are certain uh, challenges that you're going to face but if you want to be able to do something about your career in this time of crisis never say no to an opportunity and that's the second point really one is don't be afraid to move to a small town they're just as urban as chennai is they're just as urban as bangalore is is just that the size is smaller the people are just as uh, sophisticated and they are i mean people are people everywhere so you don't have to worry about that um the second really being don't say no to an opportunity uh because there aren't that many opportunities so if you have a job in hand and start, they're not offering you enough money that's a minor concern right now because there are 90% of the people who don't have jobs in hand so take the job and do the work and do it for a couple of years till the situation gets better you may decide you like the job you may hate the job but the truth is lots of people don't like their job they still work because we all have to work to make money and that's just reality so we have to do it um the third thing i would say and this is perhaps targeted more at um more at women uh, at the women graduates than at the male graduates let go of your fear um yes life is more difficult for a woman engineer than it is for a male engineer and that's the truth of it it's the truth of it because the for many reasons the world does not like outspoken women uh the world is not 
improved enough to a point where it's able to handle uh, a woman who has knowledge and who has the ability to do the same things that a man does. But all of that aside, you are just as capable as your compatriots, you're just as capable as your colleagues. So you go out and try and get the same jobs that your male classmates are trying to get. Uh, because that's the only way you're going to grow in your career. Don't be afraid. Uh, the fear that you have is not going to help you. It will only hamper you. Uh, and really, uh, I guess my only, the only thing I have to say to graduates who are worried about not being able to get jobs during the pandemic, just grab every opportunity, right? So if you don't apply to a job, you're never going to get it. So apply everywhere. Maybe you'll get a job. So if you're, if you've applied for 300 jobs and you've gotten only regret letters, like apply to more because the answer to this is not. So I don't know if you have, uh, I don't know what the economics uh, teaching levels are at the college right now, but there is a law of diminishing returns. Basically, if you go past a certain point, there is an assumption that uh, the value that you get out of uh, your effort reduces. That is not true for job applications. You have to keep trying. And the only way you get a job, you only way you get any opportunity, whether it is admission into another college, whether it is admission for uh, MTech or MSc or PhD, whether it is trying to get an internship, whether it is trying to get a job, the only way you get it is if you apply. If you don't apply, then don't complain about not getting a job. I think those are, those are the things that I would say. And I hope that's practical, but honestly, you need practical, uh, you need to be practical about this. This is a situation that's going to last for another two years. I graduated, by the way, uh, from my master's program at the peak of the recession. So not only were there no jobs available, I had chosen to uh, work in the environmental sector. Obviously, no one wanted to hire in the environmental sector because there's no money in the environmental sector. So I was in the same position you are, and I took the first job I got and I survived. I loved it. I learned to grow in it and I went on to do other things. So everyone can do it and it's, you're not, and you can too. So you just have to keep applying. Yeah. Thank you, Dara. Uh, so Jagannathan, sir, uh, could you give yeah. your advice for the students? Uh, yeah. Now, first thing, the, what I learned from AC Tech for the leadership qualities and to meet all the elders and try to be patient and be sensitive to any any questions, any problems. This is what I really took away from AC Tech and she was giving me experience and uh, success in all these 40, 50 years. Now, I confine myself to the other sector just to give an encouragement to the students of both chemical and textile and other uh, areas. See, in the 2018, we have placements done for 54 of leather technology, BTEC leather students. In 2019, it was 63 people. And in 2020, under this pandemic year, till March, we have placed 57 people already. So the total strength was 60. Only three people, we have not been able to get a job for them because of the pandemic, which we will, of course, get it once this is over. And all these people, the minimum salary was offered 20,000 rupees plus. And the most important thing is, I was teaching students in BTEC, final year, marketing management, and I was pleading to them not to go to IT. Because between 2002 and 2007, 95 percent of the students went into IT. Believe it or not, the industry was starved of technicians, technologists, and we have to make a plea to these students and told them that the other side is not greener. Don't worry about it. You come back to your own uh, mother mother uh, area. Be a leather technologist. Be a footwear technologist. Be a uh, leather goods manufacturer you can be successful. And from 2008 onwards, the situation reversed two things. Thanks to the recession in the IT industry, so people started coming back to the original program. And the industry also recognized they need the te ah. technical people. So they started giving good salaries to them. 
and they treated them very well which was not the case as i told you i how i was treated when i passed out you know i want to give some points to the students so don't get panicky because you are not getting a job as tara told nicely grab the opportunity if you want to be if you don't get any opportunity be in touch with the universities colleges go as a demonstrator go as a tutor go as anything take the opportunity that will be the stepping stone for you for success and keep looking wide now today we are not in industrial age industrial age is gone today we are in a connection economy what is connection economy i just want to explain to them that the whole world comes to you at your doorstep you don't have to go for anything everything is available take amazon take alibaba take flipkart big bazaar big basket you sit at home online you get everything industrial products consumer products whatever it is perishable everything comes food products everything comes home that is the connection economy and leather sector we envisage by 2025 we will need 6 million workforce we will need 6 million workforce including technologies of btech mtechs and phds now anna industry will have to take a lead on them they have to make a good curriculum increase the strength of the students if necessary and bring in more students the labor market is changing work is changing it is no more the same labor market what we had till yesterday it is changing today knowledge to innovation society for the new age skills are being born post covid you have to innovate you have to have the knowledge you have to create unless you create you cannot survive so you have to be very very innovative in your in your uh, work employee expectations will change employee will not just you know, it's not it's not going to be a government job that you come and sign and whatever whatever you do or you don't do you get that salary no employee for every pie they he is going to pay you he is going to expect a lot of things from you so rise to the occasion innovative technologies and design work will dominate ultimately this is what going to happen a post pandemic it is going to be innovation and design technology this will dominate it is no longer the big established organizations that dominate the small ones no more big big companies it is the fast technologically advanced environmentally sustainable with innovative skilled workforce and adaptive organizations this is what going to win this situation today post covid the world of business is dramatically changing today we have seen everything is changing you, you today's order is tomorrow's no you have to be fast in your deliveries you have to be fast in your production you have to be fast everything everything has to be like this so it is changing nurturing an environment for continuous training and continuous learning and development environment is very important so you can't spoil the environment without spoiling an environment you have to produce so this is where the skill of a btech or mtech or phd comes they have to do this being constructive and applicable to the workplace environment training methodology and structure will change and universities will have to adopt to the change the training is to change universities have to change now because it is no more that you come to the class somebody dictates and somebody writes and you take class notes and at the end of the day you write examination and get passed no it's going to be different it's more or less going to be like the us in the us this thing this thing doesn't take place it is a different type as sudhir said the industry comes to the universities the to the uh, university comes to the industry and industry goes to the university all the industries in us they give their fund research and development work in universities and they do the job that has to come to india now and it is not far off that this is going to come unless hopefully the government will think of allotting more concessions to the research and development spending so that more companies will pump in more money and give it to the industry to see that the universities will come forward with the solutions cognitive skills wellness skills social skills emotional skills will dominate the technical skills in engineering education so it's no more technical skill it's the other skills that are going to take over the engineering so if you can 
adopt these conditions i am sure the students need not worry the future is very bright like apj abdul kalam said you dream dream big achieve the dream you will definitely be successful and when you are going to an interview don't irritate the interviewers be polite listen to what they say, what they ask understand the question understand the reality if you don't know say i don't know nothing going nothing is going to loss in fact your your honesty will be appreciated and you may get the job so but don't try to fool the interviewers because they you must understand that much clearer than you so these are all some of the tips that i want to give to the students don't get panic in any case you will definitely like zara said grab the opportunity you go for the opportunity do it recently we we wanted to uh, develop the skills of uh, our btech leather students by creating leather goods sector in clra why we want to do this if people don't get employment that we will fund and bring all the old arts old methodology and train them so that all the kolapuri uh, santini ketan types of goods all these things uh, rajasthan gujjari things all these things we want to develop because that is our strength we don't want to go for the high high heel uh, branded shoes let it be indian so make it india we will we'll, we'll, we can definitely be successful there are opportunities these opportunities are to be grabbed and translated into reality and government is coming to help the banks are helping today there is no problem and this is what i want to tell the students don't get panicky you will be successful it's only a passing phase it is never uh, permanent and in fact we are very happy that as uh, some panelists uh, some antaram antaram krishnan said the export growth is growing the economy is turning back it is coming back to normalcy so by early 2021 things will change and you will all be i will all be successful we have in the alumni of alpha 1250 plus alumni members so make your chemical engineering and textile technology alumni strong be in touch with them they will all in fact job opportunities are given in our portal we we advertise in our portal job opportunities so that people can take benefit of that so you be in touch with your college be in touch with your seniors be in touch with your alma mater and to that make your uh, alumni strong unless you make your alumni strong you will be frog in the well thank you uh, thank you sir uh, if i put another question what is the typical mistakes uh, Uh, the candidates do when they are interviewing like you know it's better like you know they already landed in an interview now they need to clear it so if you could share some uh, ideas on it uh, that will be so nice maybe mr baskaran and then we have uh, uh, mr uh, ram ramasubramanian sir you are all interviewing so you could share this answer please hey, ramu sir you can start that what mistake students do when they are interviewing please I think you are on mute. Uh, Ramos, please. Yeah. yeah, yeah. First of all, they don't realize the seriousness of the interview, because you know today is very competitive world, and you know they, because many we go to the few colleges and we uh, and we interview many students. What I found is uh, many students are not taking these interviews seriously, and they are not preparing well. and uh, you know the nature of uh, questions or nature of uh, uh, the problems are different from each industry for example i am from a consulting organization so we are more focused on more focused on technical and problem solving skills so students first analyze okay what type of industries uh, i am going to have interview and they have to prepare them well and especially for us you know today the lot of uh, opportunities there in consultancy you know today in india all the licenses in the world are available so in 20 30 years when we study is only ail is in india today even technip uh, you know faster wheeler you name it any company the license and technologies they are in india so tremendous scope for these students but they are funders they are not aware second they are not prepared well see for these companies you need to have technically very good knowledge and unfortunately the today college curri curriculum 
is not encouraging the problem solving skills they study just notes and get marks but that is not sufficient to get into these companies we need to have good problem solving skills for that they have to first study good books uh, you know standard good books which we used to study 20 years back so that is the first step there then prepare well for gate many people think gate is only for the higher studies no it gives a very good foundation for you to problem solving as well as to improve your technical skills so these two i think the first thing is they have to prepare well in terms of technical competence second is the communication skills we know that it is going to be you know gd is going to be there and some you know quantitative and qualitative exams are going so you have to prepare well that is second part third part is i think what is more disturbing is the, the internship because the, as a interview panel we start uh, generally with uh, the you know the what they are more familiar see i can start with any subject but they may not be familiar with the first question we'll ask is okay where are you went for uh, you know the internships okay so that is a starting point because that gives comfort to them they know okay i have gone for but prepare more unfortunately many of the students they don't prepare well uh, you know what they have done in uh, their internship because they might have gone in the second year or third year totally forget about that i think that is the good starting for for an interview you should prepare well about the internship what you have done uh, in the college i think if you do that is a starting point so if you do well slowly you will pick up i think uh, there is no shortcut i think you have to prepare well do a good homework before going for interview today it's very competitive environment and uh, you know you need to really uh, you are lucky that you know, some companies are coming to your college i think you have to have that uh, urge to get the job before you go out of college i think that's what i want to tell the students yeah others uh, baskaran sir you want to say a few words on yeah. what mistakes students do uh, yeah like uh, tara has uh, keyed in a few points which are pretty valid there i mean like you are, you'll have to be very truthful about your when you make a cv people tend to exaggerate a lot just to sound nice and all that they copy from some you know website and and then when you ask them then they just flounder around uh, quite a bit so that that's definitely a no no um even if you are an experienced person or whatever it is when you go for an interview um personally i only look for knowledge in you know whatever uh, the person is comfortable with suppose if it's a pressure then if you say that you are uh, the first question we would like to ask them is that what are you you know comfortable in say heat transfer mass transfer whatever it is you know then we ask questions in that and better just make sure that when you are going to attend an interview it is just because you are a chemical engineer or attending an interview i mean for a chemical plant so you need to have some kind of a strength and a good command and what we do is basically try and see the try and fathom the depth of your knowledge in that particular aspect so what i'm saying is that you see as uh, mr uh, you know what we are saying is that just be sure of at least concepts in the subject that you think you're strong in uh, so that uh, and then do, never never ever tell a lie and don't fast i mean if you start fasting we will know because we have been there for quite a long time and uh, you know our experience is more than your age so you should understand that we will be able to see through that so it it makes it you look bad so any other wants to share uh, please just one more thing sorry um, if it will help if you do a research on the company that's going to interview you okay and understand what their needs are it will help if you know their processes and something basic about that we won't expect you to know the intricacies and the, you know the nuances but it helps if you have done some research on the company yeah so especially uh, this is a very uh, valid point sir uh, i do observe when people go for an interview they they don't even spend couple of minutes to research about that company right so th today they have website it's just on your hand you need to just uh, look at it for a couple of minutes just at least know what they're doing that's a very good point uh, you made the yeah. other one i would also say is that you know in, in resume you rightly pointed out 
so most of the interviews you know if i put it from other perspective they are not even experienced like you know mr baskaran is interviewing me he is good in technical but he is not good in interviewing so he is obviously going to look at your re resume and then ask questions as you rightly pointed out make sure you are able to elaborate more on the point you already put in your resume right and uh, the the third point i would definitely say mistakes spelling mistakes in resume is going to put your resume on the dustbin so please keep a note on that uh, i would ask others to jump in as well uh, uh, ramesh i'd like to share uh, a few more points to help our uh, students uh, one is basically uh, they should uh, dress appropriately when they are going for an interview i find most of the people come in a round neck t-shirt and then they come very casually the hair is not combed properly i mean they should uh, you know present themselves very well in the interview that's very important and uh, their cv should be one or two pages maximum and uh, pe people uh, uh, when the interview asking uh, tell me something about yourself uh, most of the people most of the student make the mistake saying that you know they will tell their name they will tell where they are born that is all there in the there that's all there in the cv that is not the interview interviewer is asking them uh, they should some tell something what is not there in the cv this is a big mistake uh, people make uh, again to tell whatever there is in the cv they start telling this repeating the same thing so and also uh, uh, when they when they said just uh, Uh, you know why do you, why do you want to why should i hire you so when they ask their question if they are not able to uh, uh, or they will they will ask you describe yourself so the, these are some of the areas they should be well prepared before going why should i hire you so they should uh, try to relate some of their strengths which they have displayed the leadership quality and re relate with that how those strengths are going to help in the job so then only they, they when they know ke okay, yeah this guy has some ability some leadership qualities uh, he will be shortlisted and the company is going to certainly going to you know uh, they have a better chance of getting selected so these are some of the areas where they should be most of the people don't prepare well for the interview and uh, so these are some of the areas where i like to highlight that students must uh you know concentrate on these points and uh, they should wear the appropriate this thing come go in the shoes not in the chappals you know some of the some of the you know they should uh, present themselves well so i think the, these are some of the areas where they if they are able to do that it will add to the their uh, you know chances of getting selected much much higher so thank you thank you ramesh uh, thank you sir i think we uh, we are almost uh, close to one and a half hours so we have this final rapid uh, fire maybe I you would ramesh, just say just one thing yeah uh sorry i just wanted to say uh, you know the panelists have given you excellent advice on uh, how to do interviews and what to do and what not to do and how to write your cv and things like that but the one important thing is you have to go to the interview a uh, lot of times what happens is we fix up the interview and people don't turn up uh, for various reasons but mostly i think it's fear uh, of the interview itself and the one thing i'd like to say to everyone on the call today is the more you do it the more comfortable you get with it so even if you go to 30 interviews in the first 20 interviews perhaps you're not good perhaps you don't have the answers but the more practice you get doing it the better you get at it so you will eventually be able to get a great interview where you get a job so that you have to go i think that's the if you if you if you don't have your foot in the door then you're never going to get a job i agree with you tara fully i mean uh, yeah that that's the basic people don't attend so that that creates a very bad this thing for the even for the institute where you know they they fix up a time they come late they first of all they should not be late they should be well on time and maybe 5 minutes early and you know uh, in a shake hands properly look look eye to eye so these are some of the basic things where that fear as you said that should they should not be with any fear they should just go and give their best yes sir yeah that will give so, a great confidence to them right yeah. that, that is the confidence building level okay. unless you have confidence of what uh, facing the interview how can you be successful in your life yeah, you have to face right. challenges yes. right 
Okay, so, so we have the final questions. Uh, if there are two takeaways, just two takeaways. Uh, just add. Sorry, no, no, just I add think one. Could... So okay, go ahead. Yeah. Just add one part because you know I have been in the interview process for more than ten years, and recent times what we are doing is um, uh, <coughs> our company is uh, you know hired some external agency for you know initial screening of the candidates, and they go to the not only ACT, they go to various colleges like you know. SSN, Mingreshwara, NIT, and uh, and CITs, and they they conduct a standard test. You know that test results are sometimes you know really tells about about the college. You know, uh, so if you see today in the last three, five, five to six years, I see that you know the you know the colleges like NITs and SSN are uh, you know the uh, doing much much better. The students from these colleges. Are doing much much better in this type of uh, qualifying test uh, when compared to uh, ACT. That means, unless otherwise, you know, our, our students realize okay, what is the level of competency, and uh, you know, uh, the you know the interview people, the the companies may not come to uh, you because uh, they see you know the same test uh, conducted for the different colleges has got better results. So I think this also the, you know college level at uh, uh, also the placement officers okay. has to. So, I uh, give a lot of uh, you know feedback on these aspects to the student. Maybe in the third year itself we have to give it. In final year there is no use. That's what I have been telling. So third year itself we have to give this type of feedbacks. Don't be complacent because of your AC tech. Mm. Today things has changed. Okay, okay, so today there are much much competitive colleges are available. So why should I come and take in AC tech because I am from AC tech? It doesn't mean that I cannot I can take from AC tech because the results are not uh, you know showing about the students. So I think this is one of the major problems which is why we are facing with the ACT. Right, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. Sir, I Thanks. think uh, we are going to have the last uh, question. One, one last, one last yeah. thing. No, 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 no. That yeah. is why I suggest that ACT, the parent body, should create a placement cell with competitive experts like this, who can train and guide the students for any interview. So yeah. the placement cell plays an important role. That's what I have seen in CLRA. We have got a placement cell. We, we prepare the candidates for the interview. That's why all my candidates are placed. Nobody is rejected from different industry. So this is very important for the people to think over. Yeah, we can have mock tests and mock interviews. Oh, okay. we can. Yeah, that, that's a good suggestion, sir. We will do it uh, as part of our takeaway for... Alumni Association. We will do that for uh, current year students. Uh, that's a good suggestion from Mr. Uh, Sudhir sir. So, as the last question, like you know, just keep it like uh, two words. Ideally, two words. Like, what are the two key takeaways that you want for the students? So, I'll go with uh, Dr. Anand Ramakrishnan. Just two words. That means, what are the two uh, takeaways for the students? Please. Two words. Uh... You have to take the dare to take the risk. The first D I wanted to say. Second is uh, do the things differently always, wherever your career, wherever you go. You need to take a calculative risk in your career, any point of time. And the, you have to think entirely differently what somebody thinks. You need to do things differently. Third is discipline with the integrity. Without that, you can't grow. No shortcut for the success. We need to be a totally disciplined in a personal life and the integrity is at most important wherever you go. You follow these three, definitely you can succeed in your career and we want more AC Tech people as to be stars in our country. Thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, uh, Ms. Tara, please. Two, two, Sorry, uh, uh, so the, I, the two words I would say try hard. Uh, <laughs> if you don't try, then you're not going to get anything. Okay, then. Next. Ramesh, Please, sir. I like to, Ramesh, I like to come in. Uh, I think I like to uh, tell our students that self-confidence and self-awareness is very, very important. They must have that self-confidence that yes, they can do it. And self-awareness, what is their strength? They should play their strength. Play on their strength. Uh, Jagannathan, sir, you have two words, please. See, don't get panicky for anything. You will get your chances. Everyone gets a chance. You have to wait for the chance and take it. And also, 
keep yourself technologically abreast go to libraries go through the technical publication technical books technical journals widen your knowledge so that you can face any interview or any placements with bold and courage next sir uh, uh, ramos bromian sir two key takeaways okay. so yeah two points one is i think you have to work hard more than your university examination for the job that is first point second is prepare well concepts are very very important don't think you will get job easily today it's very highly competitive these are the two points uh, baskar sir yeah focus on fundamentals whatever you say you be sure of uh, so that you you study well obviously and then secondly i would say that if the times are too tough then try and see whether you can go for higher study this is be the ideal time for you to study further so that you become more and then you tide over the uh, troubled times and then you come out and then the job opportunities are better you are also better qualified so go for a management education also if necessary but just you know that is one option that you could look at just in case other things don't work out uh, thank you sir i think uh, the time is 8 o'clock uh, though we planned for one hour now i mean one and a half hours now so we had a great discussions a lot of learning from from all of the panelists you know sharing your uh, diverse perspectives uh, we have our dean uh, dr meenakshi sundaram here um, he will have some few words about uh, the uh, quick college and then have a close out remarks please yeah first uh, i thank all the panelists uh, for being here and guiding all our uh, students and a lot of takeaways for us also throughout the college what we have to do and what are the things uh, they few points which we have discussed we are also planning nowadays that is one is that uh, for preparing gate since lot of uh, public sector uh, companies and things uh, now the placement is through only gate so we thought we can uh, start uh, doing the okay, will start preparing the candidates for gate examination so that they can have a good fundamentals and things for uh, all the departments that is uh, one thing which uh, we are uh, planning to do maybe the other point which uh, you raised about the training the students for interviews and things uh, of course we are not doing to that extent what uh, the private colleges are started doing do the every semester holidays and things but uh, still uh, now we are also uh, start training the students in uh, writing these uh, aptitude tests and uh, things and uh, of course uh, many students are still going to it maybe what uh, jagannath said about the not going in leather or something but in other branches we see that still uh, Uh, some 30 40 students who are on the top are going still to it that is one thing which we have to look at and uh, see that and i thank uh, the alumni association for uh, organizing this and we will work together in getting uh, better placements and uh, better training to the students thank you all thank you uh, thank you dear students thank you dear panelists you all have a good weekend thank you bye Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.